There are uh, three major types of skin cancer, uh, the basal cell cancer, the squamous cell cancer, and melanoma. And interestingly, all three of these types are derived from cells that originate in our outer layer of the skin called the epidermis, the uh, basal cell layer, the squamous cell, and then the melanocyte, which is the pigment-bearing cell, and that's the one that can develop uh, into melanoma. All three um, uh, types of skin cancer are indeed different. Uh, they're different in their frequency of occurrence, they're different in their clinical appearance, and they're different in their biologic aggressiveness. Uh, the basal cell cancer is by far the most common uh, cancer of the skin, accounting for well over 80 percent of, of new skin cancers that we see. And uh, uh, basal cell cancer is most commonly found on sun-exposed areas, on the head and neck, especially the nose. Um, and uh, it commonly appears as a, um, a pearly, irregular-shaped bump with oftentimes these little telangiectasias or spider veins on its, on its uh, surface. It can grow very slowly, and as it grows, it can develop a, a little central ulceration with a, a pearly nodular uh, border, very typical for the basal cell cancer. Basal cell cancers um, do not spread to other organs, so they're very unlikely to, be, to cause any death. However, they can do a lot of local damage uh, and for that reason, they need to be recognized and treated as early as possible. Squamous cell cancer accounts for uh, about uh, 500,000 new skin cancers uh, each year, so it is quite common. It uh, uh, again arises in predominantly sun-exposed areas, oftentimes from a pre-existing actinic or solar keratosis. Um, the, the squamous cell cancer has the clinical appearance of a raised, thickened, red uh, bump that has oftentimes scale on its surface or may even have a crust or uh, even a central ulceration. Uh, it can also be a dome-shaped nodule. The lower lip in men and the uh, ear are, are two areas that uh, need to be monitored closely for the development of uh, squamous cell uh, cancer. Melanoma is the um, deadliest form of skin cancer. Fortunately, it is not the most common. It, it only accounts for about 4 to 5 percent of skin cancers. However, it accounts for up to 80 percent of skin cancer deaths. Um, and uh, the unfortunate uh, statistic is that melanoma continues to increase at a rate faster than any other uh, cancer. The good news with melanoma, however, is that if it can be cured if it's detected early. And, and for this reason, our prime aim is to really uh, educate both physicians and the public in terms of recognizing early as possible the changes involving melanoma and remove it before it has a chance to spread. Yeah, melanomas oftentimes will take the shape of an irregular, pigmented, patch or slightly raised uh, bump. Oftentimes uh, the, a person who is at high risk for skin cancers will develop more than one uh, skin cancer uh, at presentation, especially when you're dealing with uh, basal cells and squamous cell cancers. It's not unusual for a person to present with several of these in different stages of development on sun-exposed areas, including their back and chest, as well as their head and neck. When a person develops a melanoma, they have an increased risk of developing a second melanoma of about 15 to 20 percent. And this is one of the reasons in our management of melanoma patients that we, don't, uh, that we continue to monitor them with complete skin exams uh, two, three times a year indefinitely. Uh, even if we feel that they've been cured from the first melanoma that was been removed. There's a nifty mnemonic that was developed by American Academy of Dermatology to, to help us all be able to recognize the early signs of melanoma when we're looking for these pigmented spots on our, on our body. Uh, and it, they're called, it's called the ABCDs. And in fact, we've also added an E. The A stands for asymmetry. Think of melanoma uh, as being irregularly irregular. Uh, 
if you draw a line down the middle of a, of a suspicious uh, lesion, uh, it will be different on each side. B stands for the border, uh, irregular, jagged, uh, notching borders, and also a little bit of diffusion of pigment beyond the border. Even if the surface is, is, is fairly uniform, if that border is somewhat jagged, irregular, that could be a, a, an early warning sign of melanoma. C stands for color, and it's variations in color. Uh, oftentimes melanomas will have different shades of reds and blues and blacks, uh, uh, variable colors, as opposed to one or two shades of a brown, which is uh, what you see in a characteristic uh, normal uh, mole. And D stands for diameter. Any lesion over the size of a pencil eraser, which is about six millimeters, uh, might be suspicious for a melanoma. However, we do see melanomas even smaller than that, and we also see several types of moles that are larger than that that are not melanomas. So of the, of the indicators that I have mentioned, this would probably be the least beneficial. However, it's still worthwhile to pay attention to. And as I mentioned early, earlier, E uh, has been added to our list, and I think it's very uh, important, and that's evolving. Uh, anything that's changing, anything that looks out of place that's been there for, you know, five, six weeks uh, as a new lesion should be uh, looked at uh, and, and monitored at least or removed. Interestingly, melanoma, even though it's influenced by the sun, uh, can, can occur almost anywhere. And that includes the bottom of the feet, uh, the genitalia, the uh, uh, um, buttock, the underarms, the, uh, under the fingernails, under the toenails. Now it's more likely to occur on a sun exposed areas, uh, including uh, the arms and legs in females, in the, in the torso, in the male. Um, but this is why when, when we as dermatologists uh, examine our, our patients that are at high risk for melanoma, we try to do as full of skin exams as we possibly can. During the course of each office visit, I really try to, uh, uh, to use that time to especially promote self-skin exams. I think that's the one single thing that can be extremely valuable uh, when uh, uh, dealing with, uh, with skin cancer and trying to detect it early and, and, uh, and watch for it. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that even though you have people come back on a uh, you know, yearly, bi-yearly basis, that uh, most new skin cancers are still picked up by the, the person themselves or their spouse or significant other and not the physician. So that, and, and, and that's where the value of, of these people encouraging them to look at their skin periodically, familiarize themselves with their, their moles and their skin. And, and then when they do come, they can, they can say, what about this, what about that, and then we can go on. And I, I want them to recognize change. Not all change is bad. But anything that's changing, whether it be changing in shape, size, color, or whether it be itchy, whether it be sensitive, then that's something that they're supposed to say, that's important, I better call the physician and go have them, have them check. And then we can be the ones to decide if it needs to come off or, or we can just continue to watch it. I really try to encourage my patients to understand the significance of skin cancer, the fact that uh, you know people die from skin cancer but then also the fact that uh, skin cancer can be cured if treated uh, uh, early and, and, it can, and also prevented if, if measures are taken at an early age to prevent uh, 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 sun exposure.